previously on Science for All. Could the Earth be flat? And, and would it contradict something fundamental in our theory? And now the answer. Spoiler alert, at the end of this video I'm going to explain to you why there are some intelligent aliens out there, like the outsmart us. There we come that the Earth is flat. We'll get there. For now I need to tell you about Christopher Columbus, a real hero here in the US, but uh, there are so many lies about him. Or at least misconceptions, like people think that Christopher Columbus was like smarter than everybody else. He figured out that the earth is round and he told everyone that they should invest on him just so that he could find his path to India through the other way of the planet. But that's not really what happened. Back then in the 15th century, people already knew. They knew that the path from Europe to India through what we now call the Pacific is like way, way, way too far to be traveled by ships. And the thing is that Christopher Columbus did not know that. He made some very bad calculations and estimated a much smaller size of the Earth. And that's why he thought he could get to India uh, by shipping west, but it was... No, no. But he was a very lucky dude. After days and weeks, they were starving, they were running out of food and water. They needed to just land somewhere, they couldn't bear the ocean anymore. And lucky, lucky them, like they, they found these islands in the Caribbean. Yeah, they were really lucky. Yeah. Maybe I sound a bit jealous right here. I'm not that jealous, I'm just like he's very lucky. And there are some people who are smarter than him that deserve much more credit. That's what I, I think. Yeah. Which leads me to the question how did people know about the size of the Earth? How could they know the circumference of the Earth if they never went around the globe? Well, the answer is back from ancient Greece and a genius, a really a genius. Eratosthenes. So one day Eratosthenes was going for water in the well of Aswan in Egypt and he looked down the well and noticed that at the bottom of the well there was light and this must have meant one thing. The sun was perfectly aligned with the well and Eratosthenes figured out that if the earth is round, well he wasn't even sure that the earth was round back then. This must have meant that the light beams of the sun were going down the earth if they were to continue down the earth, they would go through the center of the earth. And that gave him an epiphany. If he could make another measurement, maybe he could measure the circumference of the earth. I'm going to romanticize a little bit the story, but people have done the same thing for Christopher Columbus. So what he did is he took a camel and walked all the way to Alexandria. That's a thousand kilometers. And, and crucially, as he did that, he also wanted to know the distance he had traveled from Aswan to Alexandria. And he did that by counting the number of steps taken by the camel. Can you believe that? Just in the name of science, just counting the number of steps of camel for a thousand kilometers. 254, 63, 12,272 and then he got to Alexandria and figured out that the distance between Aswan and Alexandria was about a thousand kilometers and when he arrived at Alexandria at the same hour of the day as the sun was lighting the bottom of the well in Aswan he planted a one meter stitch on the ground vertically that was very important and then he measured the shadow. In particular, he was interested in this angle right here. Because if you look at the more general picture, he figured out that this angle was exactly the same as the angle between Alexandria and Aswan as seen from the center of the Earth. He figured out that this angle right here is 1 50th of a turn is one fiftieth of tau. I'm committed to using tau as a measure of angles. Find out more with this video. And this means that 
if you repeat this 1,000 kilometers 50 times, well, you're going around the Earth. You're doing a full turn. And this must have meant that the circumference of the Earth was around 50,000 kilometers. Which it is! And that guy is just awesome with a camera and a stick. He just measured the circumference of the Earth. Yeah, definitely Eratosthenes is much better than Columbus. Now today we're using much more powerful tools than cameras and sticks to measure the circumference of the, of the Earth. And we know it to be with very precise measurement. But what if this measurement was not right. Could we have a consistent model of the world in which the Earth is flat and yet we still observe whatever it is that we observe? Well, there are flat Earthers out there on the web who try to argue that. Um, and I don't know how much they believe in what they're saying, if they're just messing around, because it's extremely funny to have ad hoc explanation for everything, assuming that the Earth is flat. And I guess it really shows that if you really want to believe something, you can always make up ad hoc explanations for that. But more seriously, the Earth is flat. I stand by my point. If there are intelligent life out there who are smarter than us, who really outsmart us, there we come that the Earth is flat. And here's why. Albert Einstein proved that the fabric of space time was much less static than we think it is. In particular, it can shrink just by moving fast. In fact, the faster you go, the more space shrinks. This actually means that you can travel through the whole universe very, very quickly. And in the faster you go, the more the universe shrinks. In particular, the faster you go, the more the Earth shrinks till it becomes a disk. So there you go. The flatness of the Earth is relative. For us, it is perfectly round because we're very static compared to the Earth. But most objects in the universe are actually flying away at extreme speeds. And for them, well, the Earth is flat. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to talk about colors and dimensions. The question I want you to think about is, well, you've probably heard that there were something like three primary colors, uh, red, green, and blue which are additive primary colors. But what does that mean? And what are the three? And what does it mean that we can add them? What does this all mean? I mean, very early on in school, I learned that you should never add different things. You should never add apples and bananas. And here we're adding green light and blue light. What does that mean? So adding colors, this is what I want you to think about for next time. Uh, you can send me uh, your answers on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google Plus, uh, and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the future videos. I guess I'll see you next time.